Hi guys! Have you ever wondered if machines understand text? And how does this understanding work? Are machines like conscious? To answer these questions, let's deconstruct and expose natural language processing, an area that deals with human language and computer interaction. I studied NLP for my master's thesis and also I'm assigned to an NLP project at work at the moment, so hopefully I know a few secrets that will help us demystify this topic. Ready? Let's get started. First of all, computers can only understand numbers. That's it. Moreover, they can only understand binary numbers, so zeros and ones. What does that mean? Why zeros and ones? See, under the hood, somewhere deep, deep down in your computer, your computer can only understand two situations. Is the current flowing or is the current not flowing? Zero, current is not flowing. One, current is flowing. That's it. That's your computer architecture in a nutshell. So when you have a number 456, your computer first has to translate it into a binary number and only then it knows how to deal with such an input. Okay, so obviously your computer doesn't understand text by nature. So what do you have to do to make it understand? You have to turn text into numbers. And this is the most significant step in NLP, natural language processing, turning words into numbers. How? There are plenty of methods to do it. I would like to show you two of them, a simple one and a complex one. Okay, the simple one is called pack of words. Let's imagine you have 100 tweets to analyze. Each tweet is composed of certain words, let's say about 30 words on average, but each tweet is different. Each tweet uses different words. So in all of those 100 tweets that you have, hundreds of words could have been used in, in total perhaps 500 different words. Now, what bag of words does is it turns each tweet into a number, or to be more precise, it turns it into a vector. And don't be scared, vector is just an array of numbers, like six, seven, zero, zero, one, two, three, five. That's a vector. For each tweet, this vector will have a length of 500. That is the total number of words used in the entire sample of your tweets. Each column will represent a different word. And then obviously you have 100 tweets, so each row will represent one tweet. So let's have a look at tweet number one. If the word extend appears in that tweet, then you just mark how many times? Once, okay, then you put one. Then the next word, a cat, it doesn't appear in this tweet, so you just say zero. And then you look at the next word, and the next word, and the next word, and you just mark the frequency, how many times each of these words appeared in a tweet. And you do it for all the tweets. Obviously, you don't do it manually, you do it in Python, but that's how bag of words works, and that's how it turns your tweets into vectors. So this is really the simplest way to represent text using numbers. But obviously, super imperfect. It only takes into account the frequency of words in a given tweet. It ignores the context. It ignores the position of each word in a, in a sentence. So when you said a shelf, did you mean an ice shelf? Did you mean a wall shelf? You know, bag of words is not able to capture that distinction. So there is a better way to do it, a better way of turning text into numbers. It was devised by Google engineers in 2013 and it's called word to vec I guess coming from words to vectors. So again, word to vec turns your text into numbers, but it uses a completely different process to do it. This time, each word will have its own vector and you can decide upfront how long do you want that vector to be. So it can be 10, it can be 100, 
It's a hyperparameter. It's up to you how long you want your vectors to be. And then there is some rather complex maths involved that will fill up those vectors with numbers. So um, the steps that will take place is something like initializing weights, propagating forward, propag calculating loss, propagating backward, updating weights. What I'm describing probably doesn't make sense to you, which is completely fine. This maths is complex. We don't have to know. Just bear in mind that there is a way, statistical, mathematical way, to fill up those vectors with numbers. What is the important thing to understand, however, is that those resulting vectors will be positioned in the vector space, you know, multidimensional vector space, in such a way that words that contain similar context will be clustered together. So you might have a cluster of, you know, countries, like a word UK might be close to a word Spain or Mexico, and then you might have a different cluster somewhere else and it will contain completely different but somehow related words like you might have a word pencil next to pen next to a rubber next to a ruler or whatever so that's what's happening and that's all because of this complex maths and that's smart because it was shown that if you can do it well you will get some really cool and meaningful results for example if you say to your computer what is a king minus a man plus a woman? And believe it or not, but your computer will tell you it's a queen. And that is super awesome. So this is where machines intelligence is coming from. From this very complex maps, from the correct representation of text as numbers. That's how machines can understand text. And now that you have those vectors, or in other words, more proper terms, word embeddings, now that you have those word embeddings, you can do really cool stuff with them. First and foremost, you are now able to pass them into any machine learning algorithm you want. You know, you can't pass text into an algorithm, but you can pass numbers. So now you can pass those word embeddings into a neural network, for example, which is super cool. It allows you to predict things, correlate things, check things. One example is what I did with my thesis at uni. So on one hand, I had tweets mentioning various companies, large corporations. And on the other hand, I had some financial data from Bloomberg um, with stock returns for those companies. And what I was able to do using neural networks and many other algorithms is trying to see if tweets can predict stock returns, if some information in tweets can predict stock returns. NLP is super cool. I love it. If you want to get your hands on it, check out my other video with a NLP project for Python beginners. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a like and hit the subscribe button for more similar content. Ciao.